Angry Chicken is a production of AMove TV. Bookmark AMove.tv for more gaming and esports shows. The Angry Chicken is directly supported by listeners like you via patreon.com slash TAC. podcast about Hearthstone, Heroes of Warcraft. This is the Angry Chicken. Welcome back, everyone. This is indeed the Angry Chicken. I'm Garrett Weinzerl, and I'm joined, as always, by Willie Dills Gregory and Jocelyn Moffat. And Kobolds and Cattlecombs has finally released. We're here to talk about actually playing it rather than just uh, wondering what cards may or maybe not be good. But we're certainly going to talk about uh, whether our predictions came uh, came true or not on this episode. None of them did. They're all wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Order wrong. creeper. You were wrong right? with everything. <laughs> yeah. As per usual. I think. Uh, uh, yeah. Joss gets the Joss gets the candle. You know, it might be kobold success, and then I think that was about it as far as <laughs> any prediction being kind of right on this show. Um, I mean, some of them were pretty clear for us. Yeah. But- yeah. And I mean, and then, I think the jury's still out on some things. Like, I feel like a lot of paladins, for instance, because that's what I started off playing, a lot of paladins are running unidentified mall, and I'm still not convinced it's good just because mm. people are putting it in the deck. I still, you know, so I feel like it's still too early to call a lot of cards, but yeah. uh, some of the powerful ones are just insane. There's some, yeah, there's some cards that we did not see coming, and. Mm-hmm. Corridor creeper, anybody? Um, yeah, what? I think what? I think that's probably the biggest one. Um, but and then and then there's some other cards where you're just kind of like, I think you're still wrong, guys. Like you know, <laughs> so we'll we'll wait and see when when the meta really starts to settle. But the first week has been insane. It's been really fun. Um, I'm having a blast. So this is probably the most fun I've had playing Hearthstone since Ungoro. Yeah, um, I, uh... I think Knights was like never this fun. So no, oh, I like Knights. No, I don't think there was ever a moment where Knights was this fun for me. <laughs> I... I, and, and not that Knights of the Frozen Throne was bad. I'm just saying, like, for some reason, like, th- like from the day one to the end of it, this has been this has surpassed all of that somehow. I can't mm. stop playing Hearthstone. Basically, yeah, I um, I played until like three thirty in the morning one night. I logged thirty games in a sitting. I can't tell you the last time I did that. Yeah, uh, and I'm not even sure because I really liked Frozen Throne as well, but uh, I certainly didn't have any binge sessions like that when it launched or ever throughout the course of its life. And uh, I don't know, I don't know, man. I think I got started with the dungeon run, had a really good time with my first run, did a full clear, and uh, and that just, I don't know, it just got me in the spirit of kobolds, I guess. Because then after that, I was just like, all right, let's make some decks, hit the ladder, and before I knew it. Uh, Katie was completely passed out on the couch because it was a really late hour. <laughs> I was wrapping up a binge session. So you you full cleared on your first one, huh? I what'd did. You, what'd you play? I played Paladin and I got oh, oh okay yeah. super. No, of course you did. Jeez. Super lucky. No 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 no. There's <laughs> there are some caveats. I made horrible misplays. Horrible misplays, and I still full cleared. Yeah, the, I think the there's so what I've noticed is uh, Paladin and Shaman were the easiest for me to clear with because there's something about just being able to make dudes that seems to work pretty well in the dungeon run. But man, I like rogue has been really difficult for me. Mm. Like, well, it totally depends which bosses you get too, right? Like, yeah, I feel like Togwaggle right at the end is super, super hard. (laughs) Togwaggle sucks. Yeah. But there's also, (laughs) <laughs> There's also like what you get offered, right? Like along the right, way, yeah. and like Paladin and and Shaman both just get like sometimes you just get Murlocs and you just keep picking Murlocs and then <laughs> you're like, hey, I have a Murloc deck, sweet, you know? Yeah, I got and, uh, uh, like Rogue is like, do you want to be Death Rattle? And you're like, no, I don't want to be Death Rattle. Like I don't know. There's a lot of well, like. Well, and bad I feel like options. especially yeah. with Rogue, like you go spell heavy and then like you get the boss where like you cast a spell and he gets Trogs. And you're just like, damn it! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah, you can't exactly. do anything, and then your run's just over, uh, just because you happen to pull that specific boss. So, 
Yeah, that I got, is true. Yeah, I got yeah. super lucky against against Togwaggle because uh, he got the the weapon that adds what is it three random spells or is it mage spells to his hand or something every turn. Uh, I can't remember. I can't remember exactly what treasure it was, but it was something like that, and it was one of those zero three weapons. That as long as you don't destroy it, it just keeps getting spells. And I had a Trogzor in my deck, uh, so I played Trogzor. There you go. And nice. It it really it screwed things up for for. See, we always Vital. knew Trogzor would be good. Yep. yep. We just had to wait <laughs> for an entirely new way to play Hearthstone uh, for him to be good. Yep. Now uh, let me ask you this though, because I know we've talked it, you know, in circles, but now that it's here. Uh, does the fact that there's no rewards bother you? Uh, not as yes. much, but yes. <laughs> yeah, I know. It bothers the hell out of me, dude. Oh, my God. It, it bothers just seems me so much. So, it seems so weird, right? You have this whole entire mode that's about you going through dungeons and finding treasures, and then you get to the end, and the cobalt just is no damn about treasure. a candle, and there's yeah. no treasure, and then you just start over? It, yeah, it's like, I know. And it if really, for no it, other reason, it feels really bad with the theme of what they're trying to do. Like, sure. it's collection rewards amounts all of that stuff aside it just it feels bad when you kind of get to the end and nothing pops up and goes it, it really to me feels bad too that um like yeah you can beat seven of the eight bosses and then there's nothing like yeah. that's it and then once you finish the first like three quests like that's it you're done yeah all right so i i don't know it's like like just I don't know. You could cap the rewards. You could do anything. You could give me the smallest amount of anything. If something just popped up at the end, I would feel so much better. And yeah. it sucks because I'm not. You know, again, it's not really about me. And I had somebody tweet at me, like, "Oh, maybe I'm just old school, but I don't really care about rewards." It's like it's not about being old school or new school or whatever. It's just that like. I, you know, I was playing with Ty last night, who is the guy that I talk about sometimes on the show that I introduced to Hearthstone. Mm -hmm. And we were trying to build a hunter deck with the five packs he opened for opening kobolds and catacombs for the first time on his mm -hmm. account. And all I could think is like, well, now you've got a candle shot for your weird hunter deck that we cobbled together. <laughs> and that's all you got. And we like went on the ladder and it was like hard to win. And I'm like, man, I just want to tell you about dungeons and have you be so excited because here's a way to like earn stuff and to build it's just well that's, not that's what the I thing right like Hearthstone is part of a grander game like the dungeon run isn't all there is in Hearthstone there is a collection there is a ladder there is arena there's things that you want to do if dungeon run is where you're getting introduced to Hearthstone so if I'm introduced to Hearthstone I'm playing dungeon run I like it and I want to go try something else and there's no way for me to make that leap then I think that is an issue for, you know, new yeah. players and for people who don't have a big collection. And even Firebat was talking about just the, and I know we've been talking all year about the cost of Hearthstone, but last night um, on his stream, he was specifically talking about, like, he had to, uh, he wanted one of the legendary weapons, I can't remember which one, and he had to go buy another, I think it was the Rogue one, I had to go buy another big set of packs, and he's just like, I play this game literally for a living. I play more hours than is probably healthy of Hearthstone every day. And he's like, I don't have all the cards in this expansion and I have no dust right now. I yeah. don't know how anyone does this free to play. <laughs> That's crazy, right? Yeah. 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 And no, so it's like, I, okay, I if Firebat it. can't earn enough, yeah. <laughs> then how the hell are the rest of us supposed to do it? Yeah, me and Joss had to buy extra 60. Mm -hmm. Well, we didn't have to, but <laughs> well, yeah, we, did. we did buy an extra 60 yeah. each. Yeah, nobody. And uh, nobody yeah, I'm still you, missing but... several cards that I would like to have. So. Yeah, I did. This. I'd like to, you know, play some dungeons and earn those cards. That'd yeah, cool. yeah. I did the same thing. I was coming into this expansion like, this is it. This is going to be the expansion that I don't spend extra money on. Uh, and I did. So. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, come on. I, I think it was just because I felt really good coming out of that first dungeon run. Like, yeah, I full cleared and, and played like an idiot. Let's open more packs. But. Well, I mean, I will say this about the dungeon run. As, as much as I'm annoyed at the reward thing, it is really fun. Like, it is actually really fun. I mean, that's... And they did a great job with it <laughs> as far as how it actually plays out and everything like that. Um, I think that's what makes the lack of rewards kind of really hit home, right? Because if this was just kind of like a well, one and done, you don't want to play it again, then who yeah. really cares? Um, that's how I'm I sure. feel about Tavern Brawl most weeks. It's like, well, it's not for me, but it also doesn't really affect me. Um, yeah, and, and I and I have felt for sure the 
the weirdness of it being there and being like, it's super fun, but I don't want to do it right now because it's a waste of my time. Like that, that kind of sucks. I think Mm -hmm. that I feel like it's a waste of my time. Right. I mean, yeah, that is that is what it. But who knows? I don't know because like my my gut goes well. Then I'll, I bet a lot of people aren't going to play it because you don't get any rewards from. But at the same time, maybe maybe a lot of people do play it, and it's a bunch of folks that don't have cards that do have trouble winning, like you talk about. And this is just going to be the only way they play Hearthstone anymore. I don't I don't know. Yeah, I know, and they're going to earn nothing. <laughs> right, right. I, Poor guys. I don't know. It's just Poor. it's strange. It certainly is strange. Um, and since we didn't get to open packs together, uh, I'm curious how your y'all's pack openings went. So uh, I think I had the Joss luck this time. Is, you is that... definitely did. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got two legendaries in my first fit. Like I got like the bare minimum legendaries that, that you can get from the pre-order. <laughs> mm. Yep. I, I I had pretty good luck. I, I, I'm not going to lie. I, I think I was, I think I was, I did get the time. darkness though. And you didn't open the darkness. So I did not open the darkness. I had to craft it. And then the deck that I built with it was terrible. <laughs> um, and now I now I have darkness regret. So I uh, if I had stopped with my pre ordered fifty, I would have felt great because I got four within my first fifty. But then wow. I opened another sixty and only got two, so it kind of just averaged out. Like it's just kind of an average pack opening. I'm still jazzed because I got my first golden legendary in a while. I got a Sonia, a golden Sonia. Oh, nice. So that was pretty sweet, and I actually wanted that legendary. Normally, when I get goldens, it's Every time I've gotten a golden, it's a card I never play, uh, legendary wise. But um, so I'm gonna be I'm gonna be creating golden one one copies at some point when I figure out a deck to build with Sony in it. Uh, but yeah, and mine was mine was decent overall. The golden Sony was definitely the uh, the highlight. Just yeah, you- I don't, and maybe it's because I mean I'm not uh, too excited about legendary weapons, maybe. But I felt like um, I don't really remember off the top of my head how many legendaries I got because none of the I wasn't like oh my god I got blah whereas like with Death Knights I was like yeah Death Stalker Rexar you know like there were those like high points and I feel like that's really um and again I'm not saying Kobolds and Catacombs is a bad expansion but (laughs) the theme is a lot weaker I feel than it has been in the past I feel like their theme is Dungeon Run and that's like what they did and I don't know the cards just don't they, they're not doing it for me theme wise. They're not quests. They're not death knights. I, weapons just seem like me- mediocre, maybe. I don't know. Average. I mean, and not as exciting as like the big brand new stuff. Well, that we've what's gotten what's the been the most years. impactful legendary weapon? Probably, Probably Alanath. Yeah. Alanath. I was yeah. going to say Alanath, yeah. But even that one is like, I don't know. Underwhelming. Thank you, chat room. That's also a very good word for it. Underwhelming. Yeah, underwhelming seems like <laughs> yes. yeah, but yeah, like what, it's weird because you're right. Like, I feel like all the all the weapons. There's not a single one where I'm just like, holy crap, that thing has changed everything, right? Like, mm-hmm. and because the, the, we already had weapons, it wasn't like a fully new thing, right? Like there were some classes that got weapons that didn't have weapons before, but but those classes can't attack with them. They don't necessarily feel like be, weapons. Yeah. They're, they're permanents, is what I would kind of call them. They're, yeah. They're passives, or so I don't know. They're, yeah. It's and, 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 yeah, I'm not saying that they're bad. I'm not saying the expansion's bad. I'm just saying that theme wise and therefore excitement wise, Kobolds and Catacombs is the least exciting to me personally that we've had this year. Um, and I think, again, to me personally, it's because they are missing that legendary theme, like quests, like Death Knights, that were huge and game changing and new and now yeah. we have legendary weapons and like we already had weapons and it just kind of feels well, meh. I, uh, <laughs> yeah i mean i think it's closer to ungoro at least the way ungoro shook out by the end of it quests kind of fizzled um, but but you're right i mean out the gate everyone was trying yeah, yeah everyone was trying to make quests work out the gate you know all yeah you know you know what was actually better than we- than legendary weapons is recruit Somehow, <laughs> somehow recruit that like I looked at and thought, oh, that's I don't know about this. You know, this this oh, Barnes is now a thing like for everybody like I, that. <laughs> that freaked me out a little bit. The number of people I've seen, like maybe not accidentally fatiguing themselves, but maybe not realizing how close they are to fatigue. Like the number of streamers I've seen gone. Oh, crap. I have no deck. There's two cards. What do you mean? I'm almost out of cards. Like yeah. it's, just, it's crazy because they don't realize like. 
when you're constantly recruiting, like the, especially the uh, what's it, Oakart, the legendary, yeah, like the Oakart, Franks, yeah, yeah, three at a time, you know, like but just... I had a really fun time on day one playing my Master Oakart Taunt Druid deck and pulling I out know. Dragon Hatchers. <laughs> oh my god, wow, that was so fun. But like, I, you know, did anybody see that like? Spellless Hunter was gonna be really strong, or that, uh, or that friggin' the the Warlock playing Rin is actually like a thing on the ladder. It's on the yeah. ladder. Like people nope. are just people are playing that it. deck. <laughs> nope, definitely for real. Not. Like not not they're not doing it ironically. No, that's <laughs> the deck they chose to try to climb on the ladder. I turned on the Invitational and audibly swore in disbelief at what I was saying. I was like, wait, Rin. <laughs> WTF? Yeah. Well, they're gonna lose, and then they won. And <laughs> no, and then it's actually good. <laughs> yeah, crazy. Yeah. So, oh man, it was. Yeah, it, it's been it's been surprising. I've I've I really like it. At the end of the day, there's some really weird stuff that we've already we've highlighted here at the beginning, but but overall, Cobalt's has been cool, just not in the way I thought it was going to be. Yeah, yeah, it's been surprising, and I you know, I for one am having a blast with it, and you know I I do see what you're saying, Jocelyn, that like. The weapons might have felt a little underwhelming, but I think it's just that we're so used to the legendaries being the thing in the set, mm. and it has been kind of everything else, right? Not necessarily the weapons this time yeah. around. Yeah, I, I said last last show that unless <laughs> CAC, as uh, you like to call it, Dills, oh, yeah, uh, releases yeah. and 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 just breaks the game, I'm pretty sure this is the best year of Hearthstone. I, I'm pretty sure this is the best year of Hearthstone. It's released. There's some funky stuff, but it's good. It's real good. Uh, maybe in, I don't know, talk to me in a month. If it turns out that we all just start playing Priest, I'll have a different tune. But <laughs> but, uh, sure. but right now, man, it certainly feels like they just kind of they kind of killed it this year. So I, Yeah, I'm with you. I think they did. I think it's three expansions, really. I think that extra little bit of cards made a difference, right? Because we've got almost 100 more cards than we have in the past. And the which year was it? I guess 2015, we had two adventures and one expansion. So... I feel like that's why this year feels so, you know, crazy. It's literally the most cards we've ever had in this short of a time period. In this in this amount of time, yeah. Yeah. And this is what we're gonna get year after year, which yes, yeah, makes me very excited because it is still like the you know when when it was before and we were getting the expansion adventure expansion adventure, it did, like I did have that sense and I might not have recognized it, you know, necessarily on the surface. But I did have that sense that, like, not enough was changing all the mm. time. And this just large infusion of cards. And I do, I'm with you that, yeah, Hearthstone's more expensive and that might suck. I'm not going to deny that. But it's just the, the actual fun factor when you just get all the cards mm. is really improved. Uh, and that's that's a real thing. Like, that can't be denied. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. And it's, it's really interesting, too, because I'm also on the same page right now as a lot of every, most people who think that Hearthstone's a little too expensive right now. And that's certainly uh, a byproduct of three expansions versus throwing an adventure in there. So, I don't know, it's, to me, it's complicated. I, I think they just they need to find a way to kind of increase the value for your pre-order or just give away more more free stuff because just give away more free I, stuff i think yeah. that's the answer yeah because <laughs> rewards for dungeon runs we've come yeah. back full circle <laughs> yep yeah yeah because the end to me the, like you can't argue anymore that we should go back to adventures because the quality the overall quality of the meta this year has been so great uh, over the court the ebb and flow yeah. over the course of the year so I, that is not no, the answer I, I think the answer is stick with what we have and find a way to get more cards into everyone's hands yep so. i'm with you Anyways, uh, before we get too deep into the show, we should probably have the Patreon talk that every podcast that has a Patreon has oh, been yeah. having. Yeah. The um, elephant in the room. Yeah. 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 So we have a really successful Patreon that has completely changed our lives and allowed all three of us to basically make the leap and try content creation full time. Um, so we're all in a very similar boat with all of the other podcasts out there where uh, we are concerned with the recent announcement by Patreon to restructure their fee system to where the patrons are paying the fees versus us paying the fees. Um, and not just that they're paying the fees, but that they're moving to a upfront per transaction model, which I think is the thing that was so frustrating for us as a per creation uh, campaign is because, you know, like everyone 
is getting dinged four times a month. And that didn't used to be a problem for us on the creator fee end because we paid our fees once a month at the end of the month out of all of our uh, patron contributions. That was fine. Uh, But now four times a month to get dinged, it also means a lot of your pledges are a lot smaller than a lot of the monthly campaigns because you're doing them four times a month instead of once a month. Uh, So this has a very big impact on uh, Angry Chicken, for sure. Absolutely. Um, So really what we're here to say today is we're going to wait and see. Uh, There are rumblings. uh, One of the founders of Patreon has come out and said that, you know, expect another update this week. Uh, The pushback has been rather loud. Uh, I haven't seen anyone that's just like, oh, yeah, this is great. Cool. Let's just move forward as is. Every single person I have talked to, every response to this Patreon announcement I have seen has had critiques, to say the least. Um, and so- on both sides, too, creators and patrons, um, which I think is really nice to see. It's uh, really presenting a united front that seems to make uh, Patreon have to kind of go over and look at what they're doing and, and maybe rethink some things uh, because we've been so united on this. Uh, <laughs> I don't think anyone's happy. <laughs> no. Mm, definitely not. I would rather us eat the fees. Like give us that uh, option yes. or yeah. make the fees only happen once a month, which is what's currently happening. Yeah. Um, anything of that nature. So, uh, well, and I, I mean, we were never, you know, that we got less than 24 hours notice from the time that they uh, posted their changes. They kind of emailed creators and said, okay, this is a change we're announcing tomorrow. You guys get 95%. Yay. And you know, me being, naive i guess i went oh they must have gotten so big that they were able to negotiate lower fees that's amazing i'm guys i'm really blonde sometimes okay (laughs) turns out it was actually bad for everyone and uh yeah we had no uh no kind of prep we weren't consulted uh this is not a change that we would have opted into so uh so yeah it's uh, been a frustrating week or so anyways yeah. it's also important to note that the change hasn't gone live yet it was it's supposed to go live next week on the 18th i just knowing that there's more to come announcement wise from patreon and knowing the pushback against this update or this announcement that has come out i just don't believe it going forward as it currently stands so I, I I have a feeling that it'll probably change, but there's also I do also understand why they as a company might have made this change. Like that, I th- I think that their model works great for people like us. Uh, but if you're trying to say sign like somebody uh, on a larger scale to decide to use Patreon as their main source of funding. It may be a little bit difficult to sell them on the fact that, uh, you know, they're going to be paying a lot of these fees, not the people supporting them. Right. So I I get the sense that that's really kind of what's going on behind the scenes is that they're trying to work on deals with larger creators and get them to use the service and to sell them on that. They kind of need to sell them on the fact that it's not going to cost them a lot of money. And so it's just one of those things where it's like as a business, I see it. The problem is, is that a, a huge portion of their user base is people like us, right? Yeah. Who charge you per episode, like per per thing you make, not per month, and are making a small enough amount that the the money coming in, the thirty five cents plus two point nine percent, is a huge chunk every time that that mm-hmm. person pays their dollar, right? Well, uh, and the thing is too, like I mean, thing, so. obviously we mentioned. Uh, well, uh, in our case, it's weekly campaigns, but per creation campaigns. Um, but it also really affects any patrons who are supporting a large number of monthly creators. Um, if you're supporting like 30 people at a dollar, you know, all of a sudden you've got oh, yeah. these you're suddenly huge paying 35 fees. cents yeah. per dollar, 35 yeah. cents per dollar. Yeah. As opposed to paying one creator thirty dollars, then you pay, you know, 35 cents for your thirty dollars. Yep. Um, so, yeah. yeah, it's just it's the per transaction thing that I think is a little bit nuts. Uh, so we'll have it's, to see. That's terrible. I mean, no, that's absolutely but, terrible. Like that's yeah. that shouldn't be how they ever do this. I'm, I'm yeah. what I'm really just pointing out is just like, like there's there is a reason why like, yes. this came up somehow in a meeting at Patreon or whatever. You know, it's like if there's somebody whose job it is there to sell Patreon to to more people and things like that. And I'm sure that when they look at the model and they're trying to sell this to and me and you know me and Justin were talking about this yesterday. When they're trying to sell it to somebody else. Uh, you know, there there's this thing, this like that they have to sell them that says 
yeah, as the creator, you're the one paying these fees, right? And the creator might go, well, no, like, why would I switch to you? Like, I'm right now, I'm making money doing this other thing. So, no, Patreon sounds terrible. So, to them, it's like, oh, well, this is going to be great. Now we can sell the, you know, all these people on this service where they don't pay any of it and they get 95%. And to them, they probably thought, this is fantastic. And it, no, it turns out it's terrible. So, uh, I, I think, I think what we're going to see, I'm pretty sure that what we're going to see is pretty big backtrack on this. But like Garrett said, we're in a wait and see camp. We can't really control the outcome here. And that really feels bad as the creator is that we don't have any control over what's about to happen. Uh, and hopefully, hopefully something different happens here and there's options. And that's my, like, I just hope we have options. Yeah. Going forward. Yeah. Whatever. And that, well, that was the thing, right? We weren't really given any options. Hopefully we get them. Um, and the timeline of the rollout being right before Christmas and being, you know, like, Less than two weeks notice. It was like 10 days notice is uh, it was just, yeah, real sour taste in my mouth. Mm -hmm. I don't want to speak. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Oh, damn. (laughs) Yeah. I I had a less than uh, friendly phone conversation with representatives over at Patreon. So, yeah, I was. As have many people. Yeah. Yes. From the sounds of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So whatever the case is, um, we're concerned. We're not in love with these changes. If you are not in love with these changes, let patreon no specifically let patreon know we've already let them yeah. know you can tell us <laughs> we've heard patreon is the one where you, they need to they need e- emails in their inboxes tweets in their mentions etc cetera, etc cetera. so sorry yep. to yep. sorry to front load the show with this but if you are a patron wanted to make sure that you knew about this uh and what we were doing which at the moment is waiting and seeing we will definitely make changes if this goes ahead as planned But uh, we'll have to see what actually happens. But on the less complicated ways that we fund this show front, we have a sponsor to thank for this week's episode of The Angry Chicken. Harry's... They haven't made any changes. No. No, No, none at all. They're just awesome. They still offer the same great service. They do. (laughs) And they keep sending us great razors. Harry's.com is back to sponsor this episode of The Angry Chicken. Dills, Dills, what do you like about shaving with Harry's? What do you what do you dig about it? What don't I like about shaving with Harry's? <laughs> oh my god! I mean, come on. That we have to start there because there's actually nothing that I don't like. Uh, I actually this morning uh, was in the shower, giving my cheeks, mm. my neck a little go, and uh, it was beautiful. It's wonderful. Mm, nice, yes, nice smell. Nice and smooth. You smell good afterwards. That that foaming shave gel smells great. Uh, but they, they still are offering those custom limited edition shaving sets. If you are out there trying to wrap up your holiday shopping, those sets come with those same German engineered five blade cartridges. We have talked about the foaming shave gel. There are special limited edition handles in winter chrome and emerald green. You can personalize it with an engraving. They come in beautifully designed gift boxes. They start as low as $10 and some of them even fit inside, uh, those stockings that you might have over a fireplace if you have it or, a creative location if you don't. Uh, <laughs> so go check them out. Harrys.com slash TAC where uh, right now they're still offering free shipping. I do want to let you know though, shipping cut cuts off at the end of this week. So if you want to pick one of these up, get the free shipping, get it there in time for the holidays. Go to harrys.com slash TAC where not only do you get that free shipping, but with that TAC code, you get $5 off of your order. So go check them out. Pick up your limited edition holiday shave set while the supplies last. Harrys.com slash TAC. And we thank them for supporting this show. Now, there's a lot to talk about other than our just personal anecdotes when it comes to kobolds and catacombs. Let's get into this week's Hearthstone news. Good news, everyone. Boy, we thought we were going to have a much different conversation about Death Star Rexar coming into today's episode, and it changed last minute. Um, If Literally like 20 minutes before we started recording. (laughs) Yep, yeah. So if you missed all the hubbub about Death Star or Rexar, uh, once Kobolds and Catacombs went live, uh, it was figured out that no new beasts were in Death Star or Rexar's Build-A-Beast pool. None at all. Just stuff from Frozen Throne and before that. And then it was confirmed... Uh, by Team 5, that that was the intention because it's uh, in short, and you can go read Mike Denae's comments in full if you want to see his everything in his words, but in short was that uh, it was an issue with card text 
on the, trying to fit all the card text for all the potential mixes of beasts onto one card, and especially when you take into consideration multi-language Hearthstone, uh, which is also apparently one of the reasons, and I didn't even know this was a thing, why King of Beasts is wasn't offered even when Deathstalker Rexar first hit the ground. Um, this obviously did not go over well uh, with the Hearthstone subreddit, where it became uh, a mega feed, which I believe is still sticky posted at the top of the, the, the subreddit. It is, yep. Yep, because there were so many posts. This is all anyone over there was talking about. It was suddenly the worst thing in the history of Hearthstone, which I think is rather silly, even though Well, I, I think it was because Deathstalker Rexar found a place in the spell hunter deck, right? Like mm -hmm. that, that was a great place to put him because you didn't invalidate anything that you were doing, but you were still able to make powerful minions and have a mid to late game. So I think yeah, that you know, they introduced a whole archetype. Yeah. That around. Death Rexar was, was like a, key, a cornerstone. So, yeah. And so, uh, I think that it, that combined with just the fact that any other card that we've ever had that like generates something random discover whatever their rule which is why we should have probably known they were going to throw it out the window but their rule has been it pulls from whatever the uh like wherever you're using it so if it's a wild card it'll pull from the pool of wild if it's a standard card it'll pull from standard um that's been the rule in hearthstone so they didn't make it clear on launch of death Stark or rexar back with frozen throne didn't make it clear with the launch of the new uh expansion it took like players kind of saying, hey, hang on, I haven't seen Dire Mole, what the hell? Is this a bug? Uh, for them to actually come out and say, no, working is intended. And it's just, it's another one of those uh, communication things that it's like this card, which is a legendary, which has a high craft cost, which again, like Dills, you mentioned, is the cornerstone of the new Spell Hunter deck. Like, that's the kind of thing you should be up front about and communicate. And it's just another yeah. kind of failing from it should Team be in notes, it should right? be, Yeah, like exactly. There's no reason to not just say that to us. Uh, yes. Other than you just hope we didn't notice. Like, I don't... I, like, <laughs> like, who do you think we are, Blizzard? Like, come on. Like, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I'm at the point now where I'm like, do they notice. just think we're dum-dums? Like, they just think we're not going to notice that Dire Mole is never showing up? Like, I, what? I don't understand. Anyway. I, I, I don't want to, like, put my foot in my mouth any further, so I'm going to go ahead and shut up now. But, no, I mean... Well, I'm, and I mean... Uh, they did reverse it, right? So they did well, kind of go of. back on... Yeah. It hasn't really been reversed, but they said that they're going to work on it, essentially. So, they're working on it, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, 20 minutes before we got on the horn to do this podcast today, Keegan B got on the official forums and, and wrote, uh, and I'm... I've, I've, I'm not reading the whole thing. I'm reading the important part, but you can go read the whole thing. Quote, we will be updating Deathstalker Rexar's hero power to include new beasts going forward. Please be patient as this is a fairly complicated endeavor and we may need to start with a smaller change before a more permanent solution is implemented. We don't have a date for this change to share with you today, but we will provide more information once we have it. That's all well and good. Uh, however, please note that as new beasts are released, we may need to mark some of them as exempt for various reasons. And then he gives the example of how King of Base is currently excluded. Now, so. I now what I take away from this though is why the hell didn't you just do that the first? Like, why is <laughs> just put Dire Mole in the, the you know the beast that has no text that everyone's very excited about? Mm -hmm. Just yeah, mark some of them as this has too much text right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we'll work on it, and then put it in the patch notes. Oh, these beasts are not going to be offered by Deathstalker Rexar, right? Like, just that's it. If you do that, we don't have to. We don't have to blow up at you. We don't have to be mad. We can just have a great <laughs> relationship, Blizzard. Yeah. Just do that, please. Just start telling us stuff. Stop just doing stuff. Come on. <laughs> right. Like, no, I think all of this is fair. It, it like it's clearly hard because it has to generate yeah. a unique card. Uh, discover it's all well and good that whether we were in standard or in wild it automatically will pull from a standard or wild set but it's not creating a new card it's just adding a mm -hmm. card to our hand that already exists as is so that it's got to be simpler uh, than creating a custom yeah, piece yeah for sure um and i think that's it is all fair so i think like dill you hit the nail on the head like if you just led with this ahead of time and uh, no one would have a problem yeah with this at like, all if, if we, we would knew, to we would all totally understand our only problem is that you just don't tell us anything. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's like, it's like, it's mean, like if you're I in a relationship with somebody <laughs> and you go to the store and you and, you know, you buy something kind of expensive and then you come home and you hide it 
and you pretend you didn't <laughs> buy it, and then they find it, and then they're like, what the hell? But, like, I would have ne- they would have never had a problem if you'd come on and be like, you know, I did something stupid, and I bought something really expensive today, you know? <laughs> My older mate used to do that all the time. <laughs> yeah, you're, home and, like, you're probably okay. It but, <laughs> yeah, but instead, it's weird that you're hiding it. It's weird. <laughs> Why are you hiding it? What's going on? What's really going on, Blizzard? I remember my yeah. my college roommate hiding all of his expensive video game purchases from his family. Anytime his family would come over, it was just like, "Hey, <laughs> hey, dude, where did the really nice rock band drums go?" Shh, don't say anything. <laughs> oh, okay. Why? Oh, now I get it. But yeah, yeah I, just, I just feel like you're hiding something from me, Blizzard. And I don't like it, so just stop, please. Yeah. Yeah, I, and there's weird things about Arena too, which we, we'll get into probably on another show. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of weird stuff going on. Yeah, I don't know. I thought the reaction was not; it was stronger than it needed to be, given the se- severity of the crime. Well, let's be honest. But, Reddit freaked out about to my side, and that was stupid. Like Reddit just freaked <laughs> out, right? And, and this is another. Thing. This is why Blizzard should know by now. You're dating a crazy person. So uh, <laughs> let's just start being honest about everything to avoid the crazy. Well, but at the same time, you know, and Garrett and I were talking about this before the show off air. It seems like that's how we have to be to get things done. You know, like we wanted the Deathstalker Rexar change. We got a Deathstalker Rexar change. You know, we wanted rewards for dungeon runs. And then they at least gave us quests. Like, you know, it seems like if we don't <laughs> like throw a fit, then... You know, they they just oh do these god, things. I really hope that's not and true. <laughs> I hope it's not. I it's not the way I want the world to be, Dill. Oh man, <laughs> it's been the but story it of two thousand. Like it's the squeaky wheel getting the grease and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. the story of I the mean, end of the it. year in games, man. It's every yeah. developer on earth. It feels like except Ubisoft. Which I when did that happen? I remember them being the ones we used to give shit over and over again for their god awful. You can't opt out of it services to play their games. They seem, they seem to be the only ones that aren't releasing something, hoping nobody gets mad. Everybody gets mad, and they have to change the plan at the last minute. Yeah. It's been 2017, y'all. Ugh. So, uh, I just want to address something that was just posted in the chat. Uh, wonder how much dev time gets wasted changing Rexar that could be used better elsewhere. That's not the point here. The point is that th- that's not dev time wasted and I'm sure that that dev isn't necessarily like, oh, well, I was going to make the next expansion, but I guess now I have to fix Rexar. Like, that's <laughs> not how that works. But also, when you make your game, if you make your game not work the way your game says it works, that's a problem. And that's not wasted dev time. That's, yeah. that's dev time that needs to be used. Yes. <laughs> to fix to make your game work the way it it says it works. Yeah. So I I, I yeah. disagree. The same Please for don't <laughs> think of dev time as this like finite amount of things that like one guy does something and something else doesn't happen. Like this is not really how it works. Anyway. All right. No. The game. I makes... just had to address that because also... I don't. I oh that. that well, makes, you see that all the time, right? They put out me. a cinematic and everyone's like, "Er, where's our blah blah?" And it's just like, really... and it's like, no, that's not the same team. Even <laughs> it's not even part of Team Five. At yeah. all. They're not even in the same building. <laughs> uh, yeah, that stuff drives me nuts. Uh, anyway, also, I believe a PSA is in order. There is a current bug uh, where many players are not getting their daily quests. They're just not popping up when you log into the game. Um, one method of kind of a workaround has been figured out. You can sometimes... I, I, have, I don't have confirmation whether this works every time, but some people have found success by changing Hearthstone's default language... Don't know why this works, but apparently it does. So if you're not getting your daily quests, uh, go into the options in your Battle.net client and swap your language. And then uh, if you don't read more than one language, uh, memorize where that option is to get I was going to say, yeah, Mm. that's the thing. Like, let's pick a language that you're at least somewhat, hopefully, kind of familiar with. (laughs) Yeah. Like, I could switch to French and probably be fine, but then I would switch to Spanish and be totally lost. I I could stumble very slowly through Spanish. (laughs) Very, very slowly. Um, but good luck with that. I've got a link in the show notes for you. Hearth has got a thing up. Hearth Head's got a thing up. Everyone has workarounds for this if you, if you want the step-by-step instructions. Um, there's also a $30,000 Twitch Dungeon Run contest going on right now. It's a partnership between Blizzard and Twitch. And that's a lot of money up in the air to uh, 
to get your dungeon run on. Joss, what's going on with this? Uh, so basically, Twitch announced uh, with the launch of Kobolds and Catacombs that for 10 days, streamers can take part in the challenge. You're required to stream every single one of your attempts. So from the time you first open Dungeon Run until, you know, you clear it with all nine classes, all of that has to be on stream under the Dungeon Run Challenge community. So Hearthstone as your game, Dungeon Run Challenge as your community. And then you're eligible to be, uh, to basically to win. Uh, what they're going to do is they're going to take a top 10. So you have to tweet them with your submissions, give them links to your VODs and, and tell them what your final score is. Results are going to be verified by Blizzard. And then the top 10 are going to participate in a survival round with the top three sharing the thir- uh, the $30,000 prize. So I think it's like 15, 10 and $5,000 prizes for the top three. Um, and as of yesterday, the best run was 11 attempts to clear nine bosses and uh, or sorry to clear with all nine classes and a uh, half score of 15 is still in the top 10. So if you're kind of like under 20 attempts to clear the bosses, then uh, or to clear with all the classes, then you should probably submit your score. But again, all of it does have to be on stream and it will be verified by Blizzard. So anytime you uh, can't reconnect, you uh, concede, you know, any of that kind of stuff, they, those will count as attempts. So keep that in mind. Um, but you can, since Hearthstone's a free game and this isn't tied to your collection in any, any way, you can try as many times as you want. Uh, you just have to go and uh, make more Hearthstone accounts, basically. Um, so well, I want to know try... how much dev time is going to be wasted verifying these runs, <laughs> Jocelyn. <laughs> love God. Those... I'm sure you can just, I'm sure from Blizzard's side, they can just see how many uh, how many attempts you made. But anyways. Um, so again, no, you have, sounds like until, someone's going to have to sit down and watch all of these and they could be working on the next expansion. <laughs> hey, Dills. I'm sure Twitch is probably the people who are going to be watching the Twitch <laughs> bots. Right, I can't fair. imagine that's going to be sent over. <laughs> Dills, shame on you. How much, how much dev time is going to be lost laughing at that joke? That's what I want. <laughs> just, just. And how much dev time have we wasted talking about this? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Gotta move on. <laughs> But yeah, right. so uh, I think, you know, if you want to give it a shot, you might as well. Uh, I'm going to. Uh, who knows? I've been I've been watching. So I haven't actually played Dungeon Run myself. I've been watching, like, as many streams as I can get my hands on. I think that was my favorite thing I saw. Doing some homework, huh? Oh, yeah, I'm doing my homework. Dev time man. are you wasting doing all this homework? <laughs> Jeez. I think it was my favorite thing I watched on the uh, Invitational. Uh, they had a, a, just a show match between Disguised Toast and Ali Straza where they faced off to see who mm-hmm. could get through a full clear dungeon run the fastest. And I just had a blast with that. It's just fun to watch something completely different. Even though there's new cards and the Invitation was already interesting. Don't get me wrong. But uh, that was just... It was, it was, like, it was like the um, the Mythic Dungeon Invitational for World of Warcraft this year. It was just so different from what I'm used to. Kind of Kind of took me by surprise how much uh, I enjoyed watching it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's uh, it, it reminds me too of like you know when they did the like I, I like that Twitch is doing stuff like this. The the stuff that they did with uh, uh, you know beating like the Lich King and stuff like that. Uh, generally, I just expect Chalky's gonna win all this stuff, so I don't <laughs> really try. Um, I'm surprised actually his name hasn't come up as the guy who's on the like the leader, but yeah, it's it's very cool. It's very cool, and you know what's funny oh. is there is kind of a uh, dungeon run like strategy little scene building up where mm-hmm. people are talking about, you know, which which uh, buffs are the right ones to pick and which cards are the right ones to pick out of your three options and things like that. Uh, you know, essentially, for anybody who doesn't know, if, if you're kind of, if you haven't really done the dungeon runs, I think the best strategy is from the beginning of the dungeon run, don't worry about beating the first like six bosses. You're basically just building a deck that you believe will beat the last boss. From yes. the beginning, so yeah. every seven and eight bosses seem to be based on that. Yeah, yeah. they seem to be the uh, the game breaking ones. And if you you know build your deck one way, and then you know like say you build a really minion heavy deck, and then the boss that you have is just all removal, then you know you're you're kind of screwed. So it's uh, but yeah, those those kind of like really punishing mechanics don't seem to happen until the seventh and eighth bosses. So yeah the first like five bosses you just go face with everything and you win yeah uh, and you win yeah and, yeah. <laughs> yeah i completely and agree it's it, a little more complicated yeah yeah that doesn't surprise me at all i do think it's rad though that there's this kind of meta conversation being had about freaking dungeon runs um 
I, I, I'm, I'm a little concerned that it's going to remove some of the fun. I could see people getting bent out of shape about uh, how oh, the RNG aspect of it, of whether of, of both the minions are offered, the treasure you're offered, and the bosses you get, and specifically at what difficulty you get said bosses, uh, has a very large impact on, on how easy your run is. So I'm... I'm I'm just waiting for that. I, I, I bet I, I'm, I'm calling it now. That's the next Reddit outrage when everyone calms down about Rexar. Well, the thing is, right, there's We no will never calm down in... about Rexar. Sorry. <laughs> there's no rewards in Hearthstone for this, right? So I feel like the amount of rage is kind of tempered. <laughs> it maybe potentially might just be once they announce the top 10 and show everyone the VODs and then everyone, you know, freaks out that it's the same eight bosses that everyone cleared. And, you know, if you happen to get the RNG of not those eight bosses, then yes. they're going to freak out. I don't know. Who that's knows, Yeah, that's, I mean, that's my point. Basically, I'm, I'm just saying I'm shell-shocked by outrage. Everyone's outraged about everything. <laughs> I don't know yep. what to care about anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, anyways, before we move on to strategy, where we're going to do a big kind of overarching look at what the meta looks like so far. Uh, we have another sponsor to thank today. HelloFresh.com is back. For, uh, to support this episode of the Angry Chicken. Uh, and they still have that code TAC30 to get $30 off of your first week of deliveries by going to HelloFresh.com. Uh, we've mentioned before, it's super convenient. You can choose a delivery date that works for you. You can pause your accounts just for weeks if you're traveling, which might be happening this time of year. When you unbox your meals, they're like in these super awesome, adorable, pre-measured labeled meal kits. Like even I can't screw it up somehow um, unless I just don't read. Um, you know, onions kind of feel like pears, <laughs> but you should probably read and look at it. Uh, and there's a great selection of stuff on there. We've, we've mentioned before, you've got the, the, the classic meal, which is what I, I think, uh, that's definitely what I do. I think it's what Joss and Dills do as well. None of you are, are vegetarians, right? No, no. Okay. Although I do, op- uh, I do often choose the veggie option because there's usually one of the meat meals that I'm not quite a huge fan of. So. Oh, that's okay. Well, you can do that. Yeah, I mean, they have a you veggie can, option. Yeah, there's, there's a veggie there. option, I never choose it. Just FYI. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, me neither. Me neither. There's, <laughs> if there's meat, I'm I'm usually happy. I'm not just talking about HelloFresh. I'm just talking about life. Like, if there's a veggie <laughs> option, I, I say no. I say no to that. Just say no to veggies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, and if if you have a large family, there's a family plan as well, which gives you quick and easy meals to, for for everyone. So go and, and check it out. Uh, my favorite thing, as I mentioned before, is it just it severely lowers uh, the barrier to entry to for me to have a convenient and somewhat healthy uh, eating habit in the week because it shows up to my door. I've got usually just three meals there ready to go. I don't need to think about what I'm, what I'm going to make that night. They take around 30 minutes. Usually one of my meals takes only 20 minutes. So I can do it on Thursday night, right before into the Nexus and squeeze it in and it works. And I've just made my own damn meal. So, uh, as we mentioned before, all three of us have taken a, a liking to it. You can go to HelloFresh.com, use TAC30 when you subscribe for $30 off your first week of deliveries. We thank them for supporting our show, and we thank you all for using that code. Now, let's uh, let's see how the chips have fallen and move into this week's strategy segment. Hit it very hard. You want to blow something up? <laughs> yeah, <money. laughs> Time to pay! All right, so we're, we we did we tried this last expansion for the first time uh, because you can't. It's hard to focus in on one deck the week after an expansion comes out. So we're doing the meta so far for Cobalt and Catacombs. Uh, with a, obviously we're kind of focusing on the standard ladder right here. We're, we'll talk wild at some point. It is not this day. <laughs> um, and at least I the, the links that I grabbed, many of them came from hsreplay.net. Others came from disguisedtoast.com, uh, his website. Um, so go check them out. Uh, I also want to mention that HS Replay sent us some premium codes. We have some premium codes to give away. And if you would like those codes, uh, make sure you, uh, you we used, what, oh my God, uh, hashtag TAC Replay is what we decided to go with. Uh, tweet, tweet, uh, tweet out using that hashtag and we will select uh, five, I believe five random winners. Yes, five random winners. Uh, so include hashtag TAC Replay and at HS Replay Net in your tweet and uh, we'll give some away and we thank HS replay for sending those codes over. But, uh, now to get into it, um, boy, spell Hunter really took off guys. Uh, just, yeah, it was weird because Hunter was not what anybody expected to be like a super popular deck. And I think a lot of people saw this, you know, the two cards that were 
you know, given to us as here's your your no minion hunter. Your no deck. minion, yeah. You, you get two cards. That's that's what you build around. Uh, I think a lot of people looked at that and said that's dumb. And I think we were one of them. <laughs> we were one of those people. It was like, nah, I don't well, think I this don't, is enough yeah. support. Well, but yeah, turns I think out, that was our good. comment. Yeah, not that we thought that it was dumb or that it wouldn't work. Just that you know, uh, we weren't sure yes. if those two cards were going to be enough. Um, we're given be enough the power to actually support of, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, I still think that. Um, People might have been caught off guard by it a little bit. Like everyone thought to my side was going to be terrible. And so I don't think anyone was expecting Spell Hunter. I think in the longer term, we're going to see the popularity of this deck drop. I think it's going to um, wane. Yeah, I don't think it's yeah. as good as people think it is. Yeah. I think people because it is it's a totally like we were talking about in our card reviews. It's a totally new archetype. We have never had a Hunter deck like this before. Once people learn how to play against it then I think the popularity is going to drop off. So I can see why it's super popular right out of the gate, but I don't think it's going to stay this powerful. Do you find it to be like, it, it, I'm finding it difficult to wrap my brain around uh, counterplay for it though, because so much of it hinges on a large chunk of random spells being generated. That's true. Yeah, it does. It does hinge on the on the random spell thing because of the weapon. But I mean, um, yeah, but I don't know. I, I don't think it really does. Like, I think no, I, I think it really hinges on the fact that the the spells, the hunter spellstone is really good. The spell and, is ridiculous. And the secrets are kind of enough to keep you alive for a while. And to my side, it turns out summoning two uh, two animal companions animal. is really good. Especially uh, when I, you I think, already summoned animal companions earlier in the game as well. <laughs> yeah. Like and then just, you can do them again later in the game with Call of the Wild. And then it's sure. just all OP crazy minions. <laughs> yeah, like the, the, all those things are actually just really strong. And they just have enough. They just have enough like good spells now. Um, mm -hmm. This definitely wouldn't have worked three expansions ago, right? No. Uh, it, it's it's like so it's funny because everyone memed about to my side. It turns out that that card is just one of whatever. It's the spellstone. Like to me, it's the spellstone. Like summoning four three threes and stuff. You know, you say no minions, and yet somehow they produce tons of minions. Yeah. Well, and I think that um, the spellstone specifically is just going to kind of make its way into a more like well, specifically the secret hunter decks. I think are going to be a little bit more powerful where you can still play some minions in them. To make use of the new hunter legendary, pull out big beasts, all that kind of stuff, I think is going to be more powerful in the long run. Um, because again, that spellstone is just so incredibly powerful and it doesn't ask very much of you. Um, but tr I guess the like two, three, and four, three threes doesn't seem like that much, but when it happens, it's like, man, like, how do I even deal with this? Like, if you're not Warlock, it's really difficult. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, Warlock pre Priest right now has a great way to deal with it. And, mm, um, yeah. and, and Druid, I think, are fine as well. But beyond that, yeah, if you're not playing one of those. And even, like, I've been playing Zulok. I'm not, I don't have Hellfire in that deck. So even, even with certain types of Warlock, it is, it is certainly... Uh, a big challenge to deal with here. You're, you're right. So have you played any of the secret hunter Joss? Uh, I played a very, very small amount of uh, Kibler's list, which is like the, like I mentioned, the, the makes use of the new hunter legendary has a couple of really, really big beasts that you pull out with it. Um, and has a whole lot of secrets for your early game. Uh, it's, it's fun. I like it a lot <laughs> personally, <laughs> but uh, it's basically just like, Secret Keeper is your one drop, and then um, Wandering Monster, which is the new Hunter secret, um, Freezing Trap, Snake Trap, Explosive. Like, you can basically tailor the secrets to whatever the meta is that you're facing, and then uh, you just go into these powerful turns with your uh, Spellstones, with your Deathstalk at Rexar, and then with your, like, it's, <laughs> this thing runs King Crush, guys. We have a Hunter list that runs King Crush, finally. <laughs> I'm very happy about that. <laughs> that's, that's pretty. That's pretty insane. I remember get, being yeah. excited in vanilla that I got King Crush, and then I just, I still haven't used him. Yeah, still haven't used him. <laughs> so, so you, yeah, you, you, we're not thinking uh, Spell Hunter's gonna stick around. 
Uh, I don't think it's going to be as popular. I don't think it's going to have as high a win rate once people start to learn how to play around it. I feel like it's going to go kind of the same way as Quest Rogue, where, you know, the first couple of weeks, everyone's like, oh, my God, this deck is ridiculous. And then as we learn more about it, it drops off. Makes sense. I I also I, I don't think that it's necessarily even that we're going to learn to play around it. I think it's just that a better hunter deck is going to come along. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think I just think that like. Just playing minions on curve is still just going to be what Hunter wants to do. Um, I don't really see that. Like it's just right now, it's just it's it's cool because it's new, yeah, and it's fun. The new and we've never seen it, yeah. <laughs> but eventually, people are going to go. Well, you know, just playing Dire Mole on one, and then Crackling Razor on two, and the Animal Command on three, and just hitting Out you in the face on a bunch. Four. That's still better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I want to defend Spell Hunter just a little bit because it is cool and it's new. You know what else is cool and new is King's Bane, but Spell Hunter is actually winning, and Miracle Rogue is not really. <laughs> so, it, it needs a, it deserves a little a little bit of props, I think. And there's a lot of lot of people playing it. I mean, just looking at you know the stats we have available to us, Spell Hunter is the top play deck right now with one of the higher win rates. So, but um, Secret Mage is also all over the high win rates again, looking at stats, and it pretty much looks like an old ass Secret Mage. There's a couple variants running uh, Explosive Runes and Aluneth, but some of the top uh, the top ones aren't running those at all. They're just a normal pre Kobolds and Catacombs Secret Mage. It's basically, yeah, all they really did was add the new. Explosive runes and Alanith. That's it, right? I mean, and, and I guess now Cabal Lackey is suddenly better because it allows you to just dump cards, which is what you need to do with Alanith. So, like, I, I this is one of the first decks I tried, and uh, I was doing a lot of weird stuff with it. I was trying to play, you know, ice blocks and and Arcane all these intellect. different. I was still playing double <laughs> arcane intellect and things like that, and it's like, no, I think the the key here is just burn your face, right? Like, <laughs> Dump your cards, burn the face. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then Paladin is it seems to be doing really well, which is funny because I remember reading a, a lot uh, a lot of like pro players' predictions beforehand, and everyone seemed to be kind of down on Paladin, but they seem to be doing work on ladder uh, with an a- with aggro yeah. and Murloc. Paladin still doing just fine. Uh, aggro probably changing the most. A lot of new Kobolds and Catacombs cards, and ones I'm not even sure I agree with. Yeah, Agro Paladin is actually what I've been playing the most of so far. Um, I've got like a 75% win rate with it, and the only classes I have trouble with are ones that I don't see all that often. I've got like 6-0 and against mages, and it's like 5-1 and against priests, and those are the ones that usually I was really super frustrated against. So if I can beat priests like 80% of the time, I'm going to be a happy camper. So... Um, but you're right. There are there's a lot of inclusions from the new set in this list. Um, the the uh, legendary weapon, which I actually quite like, I think it works really well. Is uh, Valinir is really good. Um, I'm not sold on unidentified Maul. I actually just took it out for uh, a couple of my playthroughs and um, went with a couple of buff cards instead, just because uh, unidentified Maul is so unpredictable. And the more I played with it, the more I got taunt, and the more I just felt bad. So because then it's like either I don't play this weapon or I play it and then, you know, pull something like my knife juggler or my dire wolf from like out behind taunt. And I don't want to do that. Like I want them to stay protected. So, um, yeah, that's... I, I mean, it can it can high roll. You can get, you know, the double dudes and have a knife juggler on board and that's great. Or it can give your minions plus one attack and that's great. But um, I don't know. I just I find um, it's not predictable enough to like it's not good enough, often enough. To, I think earn its spot in that deck list. I'm I'm in the same boat. Unidentified Maul is the one I'm looking at and just going. I don't believe in you. Yeah. Uh, I don't trust Unidentified Maul. Uh, I think Valinir is fine. I'm actually kind of surprised uh, how well Valinir seems to be kind of finding a place. Because it seemed slow. Like, I think because the Death Rattle reequips it and doesn't put it back in your hand, it's um, yeah. a lot more. Powerful, it's, I think. So you can kind of play like an aggressive deck, and then Valinir is like, if the game goes long, I can still win type yeah, of thing. Yeah, right? I still have something. Yeah. Yeah, because it just keeps refreshing and keeps refreshing. Mm-hmm. And you pay six up front, and then you never pay again. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. And you just constantly. And you play have... a lot of little guys. 
and they die. And, yeah. Yeah. So. so this allows, you know, things to trade and, you know, you basically always have four two of stats somewhere. It's either a four two weapon or, you know, four two on your dude. So like you're you're always playing with extra amounts of health and attack one way or another. Yeah. It's, um, it's, it's, after you play it. It never goes away. So Yeah, it's a never ending buff train. Yeah. Which uh just it just surprised me. I definitely underestimated Valineer. Not as much as I underestimated Spellhunter, but still nonetheless. Yeah. Um and Corridor Creeper. I think Corridor Creeper is the number one head scratcher for me. Just like I feel like I should have seen that card coming. I'm trying to remember when we were talking about Corridor Creeper specifically, if I yeah. personally realized that it buffed or uh, reduced its cost off of minions on either side. I, I thought it was well, your I, No, own we did minions? say that, but it's one of those oh, okay. cards you look at and you think it should probably work the other way. But Yeah, because it, yeah, no. off of all minions that die, it seems crazy ridiculous. Um, yeah. Because, yeah, it's basically just, like, always free. I don't think I've ever played it or seen it played for, like, more than two mana. <laughs> Maybe not on turn two always, but <laughs> it's definitely, like, <laughs> zero to two mana for that 5-5 five five all the time. Right. Like that, that's the point, right? Like, it's, like, it's yeah. kind of hard to get it out, like, early. So you're, like, feeling good about, yeah, turn four, 5-5 five, five, or turn three, 5-5. Five, five. But just dropping a zero mana five five ever at any point in the game, you're just like, yeah, why not? It's a zero mana five five. Yeah. It just fits in so easily to so many turns. Um, but, but yeah, yeah, I think that's why I undervalued the card anyways, because I thought it was only off your own minions. And then I was like, then you have to play a very specific kind of deck. Like, but again, like something, anything where you're putting minions on the board, especially a build like this aggro paladin, like you're constantly putting like lost in the jungle is being played. So you're putting like, Two one ones down on turn one for one mana. They're gonna die. Like, why would you not also have corridor creeper? <laughs> well, it's not even that. It's it's the fact that patches is a thing. And patches and on yeah. turn one, you're literally playing two minions, and then yeah. they're immediately trading. And your opponent dying. is playing two minions, and yeah, everyone's and, trading, and everything's yeah. dying. And then and... by the time it's like turn three, it's already free. Like that's yeah. kind of the thing. It's and I I think it's really been enabled by just kind of what the meta is, right? Mm -hmm. Like. Yeah. I think that when Gadget Zan rotates out, it wouldn't be very good, right? Right. Like that's kind of the feeling that I get. It's like patches get really patch enables us. Point oh, the start of next year. It's like old patches rotates out, and we get like patchier. And then yeah, yeah, <laughs> patches comes in. Yeah, I mean that's. I think that's really the thing. It's like just patches enable so many decks to be, you know, these very tempo aggressive style decks. And without patches, that might not be how Hearthstone is played. Uh, mm -hmm. But until that day, we're just that's we just have to deal with that, right? Like Ray, Rain had made a whole video about this. He was just like, "This card is not actually a problem. Patches is a problem, right?" Mm. And until patches, patches goes has away, been a problem for so long. <laughs> Which is crazy to think he's only been around for a year. It feels like so much longer. Oh I God, know. you're right. We have another year of him, don't we? No, just really another few the meta. No, no, Patch is going away. At the in start oh, yeah. of okay, yeah, that's right. Because he wasn't on Goro. He was... Yeah, because Goro, KFT, and this one yeah. are sticking around for another year. But yeah. Patch okay. is... Cool. <laughs> All right, jeez. I know. <laughs> that is a minor heart Thank attack God. there. Um, but I do kind of want him to go to Wild. Like it's, he's, he's been such a fixture. If I didn't see that damn cannon come out of a deck ever again, I'd be kind of sad. But... Uh, Priest... Seems to just be as good as everyone feared it would be. Yep. Yeah, it's good. I, I think it's funny, though, because I've been playing a lot of Big Priest, and I think Big Priest is actually the better version of the Priest now. I'm uh, not going to refute yeah, that. Yeah, I've seen Big Priest everywhere. I think it's better than Raza Priest. Yep. Yeah, I yeah, I agree. It's just so hard to deal with. Like it Now, the funny thing is that in the matchup, Highlander versus Big Priest, Highlander definitely wins more often in that matchup but against like every other matchup big priest is just insane and i i've been playing i got i'm at like rank six now and i was kind of struggling early on like playing all these weird decks i was trying all this stuff out and then i was like <laughs> hey let's just put giant stuff and this you know psychic scream and lesser spell stone in my in my deck and suddenly you're like oh yeah i just don't lose like sometimes i get really low <laughs> 
So those get really low, and then I summon, you know, two obsidian statues on the Ysera, and then I just win. So yeah, it's uh, it's the spellstone, right? Like I, I'm just now realizing that the link I had as an example doesn't have spellstone in it, but the spellstone just gave them so much more gas. Uh, and it's it's a yeah, way. The mass like, res is disgusting. <laughs> even if you just res two minions before yeah. you actually, you know, get it upgraded, you're resing two nine plus drops. Like I. I don't know, like seven mana to get a Ysera and an Obsidian statue feels pretty good. Mm-hmm. It's not bad. Yep. Turns out. So are you, I mean, you've been the biggest, I think, critic of Big Priest on the show, Dills. Maybe. I don't know. I don't think any of us are particularly well, jazzed about it. <laughs> um, I, yes, you're right. I did not like the deck for a long time because it was so reliant on Barnes, right? It was like it just sometimes it barns and it won. Sometimes it didn't barns and it lost. Right. And that was kind of my issue with it. Now it feels a lot more like it doesn't need barns at all. Like barn, once barns actually rotates out, I think Big Priest will still be a thing. It just the shadow essence and mm. just getting to turn nine are enough almost. Right. And then you just res stuff. And I did really like early on when we were playing like Resurrect Priest. And it was all about making, uh, you know, injured blade masters come back and stuff. I, I did. I like. I really liked that deck. What I didn't like about Big Priest was that it was just, yeah, it was this high roll deck, right? It was like sometimes I win because I draw barns, and sometimes I don't draw barns and I don't win. That's I don't like well, decks like that. I feel like that's the the problem. I think with this version is because you have barns, it makes you or gives you the ability to do super ridiculous, powerful things way earlier in the game than you're supposed to. If you, it feels to me like if you're able to play, you know, nine and 10 drops over and over and over again, that's something that you should be doing, you know, like turn seven at the earliest. You know, the fact that you could potentially, you know, get Yasharaj pulling like 10 drops out or nine drops out on turn four, just like it just feels really unfun to play against, you know, and really unfair. No, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. But if it's that's, that's barn, the issue I've always then, had with it. But yeah, it's without not really barns, reliant on that better, anymore. Right? That's yeah. the thing. It's now it feels like you know if that doesn't happen, you can still win. And I, I didn't, I just didn't like it before because yeah. you basically mulliganed everything and looked for barns every time. And yeah. now I'm like, I'm like keeping Shadow Word Pain, and I'm keeping Dragonfire Potion. I'm keep, I'm like, I'm keeping stuff because it's like You're thinking no, no, about I'm just it. trying to survive until yeah. turn eight or nine, and then I actually play a Lich King. For eight man, I actually spend the mana to play him. What? <laughs> but the point is that then I bring him back over and over and over again. Yes. Which feels yeah. like stuff you should be able to do. You yeah. know, turn, yeah. you know, 11, 12, 13 should be, you know, crazy big and, and potentially sure. swingy. Um, but yeah, when those big, such... potentially swingy things happen on turn three with the coin or turn four, it's just like, yeah, ah, really? <laughs> there's such a satisfaction, by the way, of playing Psychic Scream. Like, it is just, mm. I don't know, there's something about it. Like, people. There's so many flood decks now where people are just like, you know, they get to like turn seven and they got all this stuff on the board and you're like, yeah, that's cool, man. Have it all back. Like, put it all back in your deck. It's so <laughs> good. I, I really love that card. It's great. I had a weird interaction with Psychic Screams and because everyone's been freaking out about Dust Dark or XR, I have not been able to find anyone else having a discussion about this, but uh, I've been playing mostly just Zulok um, to be boring because I, I just wanted to go up against these decks with something I could oh, kind really of good. pilot okay. Yeah, yeah Zulok's been working actually really well for me. Um, and uh, I got Psychic Screamed and I Ghoul Danned and it brought back a bunch of crap that the Psychic Scream shuffled back into my deck. So, but the, the Ghoul Dan's supposed that to only be... That feels like a bug. Yeah, because Psychic Scream does, is specifically says shuffle into your deck. It doesn't say kill minions and then put copies of them back in the deck. Right. It's well, and that's why we thought it was so powerful, right? Because things like Death Rattles, things like, you know, Ghoul Dance Energies weren't going to yeah, actually that's definitely go off. a bug if that happens. So that has, because... to, be, that has to be a, a bug. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, it's definitely died that this game, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Ghoul, I'm Ghoul looking Dan at Blurry Ghoul Dan now. It says minions who died. So, yeah, okay. I, that's weird. Yeah, because I, I had one doom guard that i played that had died i had my other doom guard in my hand i played gold dan and i just passed and then there's a doom guard that i could have attacked with i'm like wait what he didn't die he was shuffled back into my deck i'm confused yeah no i feel like that's a bug yeah so i don't i don't know might it might be if anyone else has experienced that let me know or, or a similar thing where it treats it like a death so i feel like it it definitely should not but 
Uh, you guys want to talk about Rogue for a second? Uh, because everyone's trying to make Miracle work. The win rate does not seem to be supporting this. I was really excited about Miracle with Kingsbane. And, uh, but, but looking at the stats available to us, I'm not seeing very many versions of this deck with an above a 50% win rate. Yeah. A lot of people were talking to me about Kingsbane on my chat the other night. And the, it, the issue I have with it is even if you, even if you do like doomerang it and all that kind of stuff, <laughs> it's just, it doesn't deal enough damage to win. You need something else in your deck to deal the 30 damage to the opponent's face. Right. Mm-hmm. You can buff it all you want, and it's you're still like required. You're, like you're dealing like six damage at a time at the most, right? Because it's like two deadly poisons, and then you can play like the pirates that buff it. But mm-hmm. that's about it. And you still have to like draw all those things, and then you have to redraw your your king's bane, which means you have to draw the thing that draws weapons out of your deck, or mm. you know, doomerang it or something. So it's I don't know. It's just like it's too slow. It seems um, super slow, and maybe it's just because I've been playing a lot of aggro in the last week, but it seems really slow, and I seem to just run over them before they can even, you know, play it the second time. Yeah. Yep, pretty much. I agree. I mean, it feels like something is there, and if you're, lo- like, looking at the played win rate, it's the, the it's win per- it's, uh, potential definitely skyrockets with Deadly Poison. It seems to have the highest played win rate of any of the cards in, in this one particular deck I'm looking at. But but you're right. It's just it's just too damn slow. Um, especially we, we talked about Valinor earlier. Once you play it, you just keep getting the damn thing. This mm-hmm. thing, you, yeah. you, Kingsbane, you have to yeah, work for. Yeah, if this if this died and went back into your hand, then I feel like that would be better. I mean, you still have to replay it, right? But sure. you wouldn't have to redraw it, which adds that extra layer of complexity to it. Right. I think the issue too is that why don't you just play Kelaseth? Bone Mare, Corridor Creeper, Rogue. Like if you if you want to play Rogue, it's like that version is just insanely better. Well, that's the so. thing. Yeah, Tempo Rogue is still doing very well on ladder. Oh, it's Extremely yeah, super good. Extremely well. Just Tempo anything right now is super I, good. Yeah. <laughs> and and a lot of the archetypes I was looking at uh, before the show today aren't even running Kobolds and Catacombs cards. They're just running old school pre you know, CAC <laughs> freaking tempo rogue. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, we are seeing some with corridor creeper plus corridor creeper. Yes. Plus mm-hmm. corridor creeper. Yeah. I'm also seeing Sh- Sonia shadow dancer a little bit. I was to say, I've seen Elvin minstrel. Um, the, yeah. Elvin Minstrel. Yeah. Pull stuff from your deck. Yeah. Well, the deck is full of minions. So yeah. drawing two of them is pretty sweet. I think Elvin, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I had hopes for Elvin Minst- minstrel and I feel vindicated because I have certainly seen him played quite a bit in my own games this week and he seems to get value. Mm-hmm. It, so. It's kind of like why, you know, uh, there, there was, there was a very specific interaction with the tempo rogue, which I would come across quite often. It was like the reason to play Lich King in the deck is that sometimes you would draw Army of the Dead and then you would just summon five minions, right? Like, it was just so strong. And it's just because you look at the deck and the only spells is like a Cold Blood and a Shadow Step. And like, Mm -hmm. that's it. Everything else is just a minion. So, seems like drawing two of them is going to be quite strong for you. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Seems uh, seems pretty good. Uh, I kind of alluded to Zulok already. That's what I've been kind of just cranking away with. And uh, yeah, uh, turns out Cobalt Librarian and Vulgar Homunculus, just as good as we thought they were going to be. These cards are stupid good. Yeah, yep. except the Homunculus doesn't get that much play because of Keliseth. But once mm-hmm. Keliseth's not here anymore, uh, Humunculus will have his time in the sun. I've been sure. running a, a non Keliseth version, and it's been kicking trash for me. Wow, yeah. you're 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 a hipster. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, and Humunculus is always gonna rotate and be in the same set as um, Prince Keliseth because they're from oh, the same Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah they'll so never they're be always gonna. The yeah, set. they'll never yeah. be. Yeah, they'll yeah. never be apart. Okay. I really like it with you know with you know Zulox that are running Gul'dan because when you drop Gul'dan at the end, if the game had to go that long, those extra two four taunters help you kind of secure that long game win. Although I mean, that's true, the argument yeah. could be made if I had just played Keliseth, it wouldn't have gone that long. But yeah, yeah, if you just play Keliseth and you're summoning all your dudes with plus one plus one, then yeah. <laughs> It's it's so weird to me that Kelis just became like this staple. Like I you <laughs> yeah. can't play two drops anymore, guys, because Kelis 
<laughs> I love it. I love it, dude. Like my favorite stuff about Hearthstone is when it's just like, hey, you know everything you know about card games, just it's irrelevant. It's completely irrelevant. It happened with Reno. I was like, what do you mean I have to play one ofs? That'll never work. <laughs> Oops. Best archetype of the whole damn uh, season, basically. Uh, and thing, the same damn thing happened with Kalisath, and we're seeing it right now. We'll see how long it lasts with Hunter. Just... <laughs> That's the that's the one where I'm just immediately feeling super super smug because last week I was like I hope we're wrong about this just because I want Reddit to be wrong, and uh, <laughs> and now it's just everyone's losing their mind over it. I'm just like, <laughs> calm down, humans, calm down. But it's some uh, some good stuff. Control lock is the 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 big kind of surprise um, deck for me for Warlock. This is the one we talked about earlier where they're running Rin. Uh, we saw this at the Invitational. We saw it win multiple times at the Invitational. Uh, it's running Rin the First Disciple. Uh, the Amethyst Spellstone is really doing work as well in this deck. Void Lord. Uh, if we're just going to focus on new cards. but Well, the Rin is, is interesting because it looks like, like when you just see it in a deck, you think, oh, well. Wow, it's a Rin deck, but it's really not a Rin deck. It's like the Rin is just there to be able to beat super uh, like control decks. Like you, you can win control matchups, right? Mm -hmm. Right. It, it, but really, the deck is all about uh, just summoning Void Lords with the possessed lackey, and then yeah. resummoning Void Lords again uh, because damn Void Lords are annoying as hell when they come out <laughs> on turn five. Oh my god! Mm -hmm. And then when they just keep coming back and keep coming back, it's that. It's crazy, right? Because they come back with uh, Gul'dan as well as Nizoth. So, yeah. So yeah, they come back all. They come back. So over if and you over. cheat yeah. two out because of your possessed lackeys, and then you bring them back with Gul'dan, that means that four of them will have died. So then, if you Nizoth after that, you're getting four more back. <laughs> crazy man, crazy. There's some really cool slow stuff happening in this expansion uh, i mean again it's out the gate who knows this might all fizzle uh aggro may just be king again because there are some aggro archetypes archetypes that are working really well as we, we already talked about aggro paladin also murloc paladin but um yeah it's uh I, i'm surprised out, out the gate it feels like both if you want to play fast if you want to play slow there are multiple good ways to do that and pick up wins mm -hmm. consistently um and then there's a uh, then there's good old warrior pirate is seems to be alive and well with really healthy win rates everywhere I have looked. Um, nothing too crazy, but we are seeing uh, of, of new cards: spiteful summoner, unidentified shield, and mithril spellstone included in pirate decks now. Seems like pirate decks shouldn't want shield. <laughs> uh, I mean, it kind of I guess makes sense because you know late-ish game stuff but i mean there's options there's, there's aggressive options uh mm -hmm. like possibilities again you're kind of hoping that it high rolls for you much like yeah the unidentified I'm, still, mall. I'm still not sold on the unidentified stuff but i, I guess we'll see how much they well, stick around that's that's like that one is one of the good ones that's, the unidentified yeah. shield it's if you're talking about the unidentified cards like that that i think is the only good one yeah, because uh, all of the options you get are pretty sweet, and it's kind of it's what I thought was super weird was that you'd have the spiteful summoner, unidentified shield, mithril spellstone thing going on, but I played the deck a bunch, and it was actually really good. I mean, those the, the combination like it was just like one of the problems that you always had with with the uh, pirate uh, warrior was that at a certain point you just Ran out of gas, right? Yeah. And now all of a sudden on turn six, you're summoning a four four and like a you know, a seven drop. It's really good. It just gives you that gas to just finish the game off. So I think it's also worth mentioning, at least in the list that I've seen, unidentified shields is a one of and they're going down to a one of on upgrade. So high chance mm -hmm. of hopefully yeah. drawing your upgrade. Um so that you you get summoner value, you're either gonna uh, proc off of a mithril spellstone or an un unidentified shield where you get some serious value out of your summoner um but yeah i uh, of all the unidentified anythings i guess objects we could call them the shield is my favorite it's like even the armor which wouldn't be that exciting in this archetype it's still 15 damn armor yeah so 
it's, it's interesting. But what's more interesting is the Recruit Warrior. We haven't really talked about any Recruit decks. This is the main one I've seen going around. This deck is bonkers, guys. It's actually really good. Yeah, it's, it's Big Warrior. And I mean, I get, we kind of knew that that's what it would be, but I didn't think that we were going to actually see it really working. But yeah, it's really working. Um, the win rates are looking fantastic. Yeah, the, the Forge of Souls is really friggin' good because you draw your Woe Cleaver every time, right? Mm. And so it's just like you have two Woe Cleavers in your deck because you just kind of always get it. Um, and I, I actually was doing a version that uh, I saw Crip was running, and that was really interesting because it basically had an OTK combo in it. So the only minions you ran were uh, Garrosh, or sorry, Gromish, um, and then the two uh, charging devil sores, the charged devil sores, you know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. And so basically the idea was you would just play Woke Cleaver, and then the next turn you wouldn't attack with it, and the next turn you attack, and then you'd get a charging minion, and if you got the devil sword, it could hit face because the battle cry is what makes it not able to hit face, right? Then you would double in or fire it. Then you would play Sudden Genesis, which summons a copy of it, and then you play Sudden Genesis again, and you get two more copies of it, and you just get four charging Devil Swords, who are dealing uh, 11 each. Pretty that, sweet. That's insane. <laughs> yeah. It's actually really hard to get off, because you then, like, the whole rest <laughs> of your deck is just, like, draw and, uh, you know, draw and control stuff. And Joss, I heard that. Uh, <laughs> you see my eye roll? Like, that sounds like a personal problem, Dill. <laughs> <laughs> But when it happens, it's very satisfying. Mm. <laughs> oh, for, uh. Thanks, Dills. Thanks. Family show. Family show. Look, <laughs> I wasn't going there, and then she then she I can't it. help it. It okay, was not I just it's my thing. It was not just her either. Like that made I I silently uh. reacted. Anyway, um but that is that's completely crazy. Um and so is, uh, the the non OTK version is is equally as nuts. I mean, again, it, it utilizes yeah. Woe Cleaver. There's so many big inclusions in this with the Grom, Ysera doubled up on the Sleeping Dragons, like we you know thought might happen. Deathwing, Deathwing Dragon Lord, Yasharaj, all in this deck. Yeah, I mean, it's you know just summoning giant minions, but you know three of them in a row with Woe Cleaver, pretty good. You know, it's funny too. I I'm very surprised by this, but. Nobody's running uh, weapon removal. <laughs> like, just nobody cares. You equip your weapon and you just do it. You just get to do whatever it does. So, yeah, do we? Th yeah, I the think only the issue is that I've the other weapons kind of suck. There, right? right? <laughs> yeah. Is the other weapons suck? Like, that's the thing. The only weapons being played is Woe Cleaver in this deck and Aluneth. Everyone else just is like, yeah, whatever. I don't care. And Valinir and Paladin. Hey, Valinir. You kill sure. it and then that doesn't But that really one, you help. can't even yeah, kill help, that yeah. one. So, yeah. Yeah, that's that's the one that has the removal protection, but yeah. you're, but you're right that we're just not seeing it. I, I in my games at least, and I've been floundering around in the teens trying to figure this out because every game I play is completely different from the last for the most part. I think maybe dragon priests are the only thing I've hit with any sort of regularity. Um. But I, I think once things kind of level out and something emerges in popularity, and if one of those decks is this warrior deck, then you'll start seeing things like oozes, things like Harrison included again. But the gates just opened. Everyone's trying something different. So I'm not sure anyone's feeling like it's worth it to include weapon hate. Yeah, I, 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 that, that is true. It's... I, but I was expecting a lot more weapon hate now, like early on, right? When everyone would be assuming the weapons would be everywhere. Yeah, overreacting. Yeah, and I and I think it's weird to me that it's just not happening. So I don't know. We'll, we'll, we will see. We will find out if it yeah. starts to become a thing at some point in the future. Yeah, I think it's fair. So was there any other decks that you two wanted to mention that we didn't already cover? Um, Not really. I tried Elemental Mage uh, right off the get-go and couldn't figure it out so abandoned yeah. it pretty quickly there might um, be a build somewhere out there but nobody's yeah. really come across it yet um but yeah i think the the burn aleneth mage is pretty good um other than that i haven't really seen anything i've seen a lot of just priests which is bleh. but i'm beating them so yay <laughs> 
think I've won a bit, maybe fifty percent of the games against priests. It's it's been kind of on and off, but uh, but it, it doesn't. Spell mage is a good one too. Yeah, that's that's the one that God felt. That, that was the one I think I had the the most gut reaction to. And I'm blanking on the name of the card, but what's the one that does damage to the enemy minions based on the cost of the card that it pulls? Oh shoot, I can't remember. I think it's flame something. Yeah. Flame me, make flame spell. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember the name. <laughs> That's the, the one. The first time that <laughs> happened to me, man, I had a huge board and it just went bye bye. And that just, oh man, that felt, that felt nasty. But uh, beyond that, is it Dragon Breath? Is that what it's called? Dragon's Fury. Okay, that seems ah, that seems more right. Thank you, chat room. Thank you, chat room. I just know flame what it does. Flame flame spell. I think you guys got it. That was the, <laughs> the the grossest reaction I've had since launch was to Dragon's Fury. It was just like, oh my god, that that really hurts bad against a class that I already kind of already always worried about my board against. But um, but beyond that, uh, so far so good. We'll see. I'm I'm a little concerned. Priest's really going to take off, and we're going to see a lot of priest. But time will tell. Um, well, they were already popular going into the expansion, so I'm kind of hoping that we're at the peak of their popularity now and people are going to figure out builds for other classes and other decks, and then that's going to decrease the popularity of Priest as a result. What I'm hoping, anyway. Yeah. Hi, Rolly Big Priest. Well, times two to your hope. <laughs> uh, before we move on to emails and wrap the show up, let's thank our patrons supporting us over at patreon.com slash TAC. Yeah, things are weird with Patreon, but many of you are still supporting us, and we really appreciate it. And on this episode, thank you to Eric V, M Blind, Adam H, Kakabub is how I'm going to choose to pronounce that, and Lucas S. Thank you all so much for supporting the show. And at least for now, patreon.com slash TAC is the best way to support the show. So thank you, everyone, for your support. Now, let's take some emails from TACpodcast at gmail.com. Hello. Hello. It's me. Hello. Um, just quickly, do you get my message? Yep. Hello, brother. <laughs> Alfredo kicks us off today and makes me hungry and says, Hello, pissed off Chanticleers. I am very excited because of the dungeon runs, but three packs and one card, pa- card back? I won't be playing it for very long. I think something that could be great is if once you finish your dungeon run for the second time, you could get one of the card backs you don't have from past ranked seasons. There are so many card backs that I would love to have, and I won't ever be able to have them. What do you guys think of it? Anything, please, for the love of God, sure sounds good to me. What if you could, like, discover a missing card back or something? So you'd have, like, at the end of your dungeon run, three choices pop up from ranked seasons, I think, would be uh, best, because there are things, like, you wouldn't want the legend card back or the, like, golden esports card back to be in that pool of cards right. <laughs> obviously um but for ranked seasons i mean i think that that would be great because i know like specifically one of my friends uh loves 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 the cupcake card back and she just couldn't get to 20 in that season and like didn't realize when the season reset happened it's never more and uh she just really really wanted it and didn't get it and was really sad and then never went back to hearthstone because then everyone was playing with the cupcake card back and she couldn't take it so oh no if there was a way she could go in and learn and earn it would be great i think she would totally do that that is the saddest reaction to not be able to get a card back i think i've ever heard yeah <laughs> it'd be really hard to get these card backs too so i mean well, yeah, I, I mean, have if to you beat it with all nine classes again, beat with all nine classes, and that's, to get a choice of card backs or something, I feel like yeah, yeah there's just something. That's a lot. Just, that's a lot of something. time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's it's probably even more time potentially than getting to rank twenty in a in a season would take, right? Like. Oh yeah, I think it's one hundred percent more time. I get to rank twenty on all my all my extra accounts every season, barely playing them. You know? Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, I feel like uh, that maybe that would be a good solution. Like, make people do things to earn them and, yeah. <laughs> Let Nevermore have her cupcake. <laughs> <laughs> I would, actually, no, I wouldn't. I like the cupcake, too, but uh, I was going to say I'd gift it. But, no, I'm, I'll be a Grinch. I, I'd rather like my cupcake card back. <laughs> and, I mean, yeah, like, chat room right now, Luxadar is saying I have all the rank card back. So do I. Um, but, you know. Not everything is for people who've been playing since forever. That's that's. <laughs> exactly. I think that is a, a really fair <laughs> kind of <laughs> stance. Is like I, 
I want there to be something. It doesn't have to be for me. I would just like it to be something to recommend to friends. Mm-hmm. So, I, I really like Dungeon Run. I, I had... I don't stream often, guys, and I streamed my first dungeon run, and it was some of the most fun I think I've ever had on Twitch. So, Yeah, it seems to be really interactive, which is the thing that we kind of expected, I think, because there's no turn timer, because there's so many choices to be made with, again, no timer associated with them. Um, whether you're building your deck or whether you're choosing your treasures, either way, you know, there's some real room for conversation and interaction there. So, yeah, I'm usually, gonna... like, Twitch plays dungeon runs. <laughs> Ooh! Oh God! Somebody with more skill than I make that happen. Um, <laughs> yeah, like I, I, I'm gonna. I had two really kind of big, memorable moments. One was uh, not picking uh, Alex Straza off of a discovered dragon card, <laughs> and like in, I think my sixth or seventh boss that had a lot of health. Mm. I was like, oh, bookworm! I'm gonna get some. I'll get some value out of that. And everyone's like, what are you doing? Alex Straza is like a 45 damage card. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't take it and I still won and then the other one was uh, against Togwaggle he, Togwaggle had to have taken over a 7 minute turn where he just kept generating the bag of coins that would fill his hand oh. up with coins and he would just keep casting coins and we just sat there for over 7 minutes just going when is this going to end and it just blew my mind and I had like an eighty over 80 attack uh, token off of Trogzor at the end of that and then he vanished everything and everything went back into my hand and I cried. Of course. Yep. But I still, I still won. I don't remember how I won. I remember having my soul broken at that very moment, but I still won. Whatever the case. Uh, Dills, next email. Uh, Adam says, greetings, flustered cluckers. Uh, man, don't say that in the wrong order. Yeah. <laughs> I've, been thinking, <laughs> I've been thinking about the new recruit mechanic and wanted to get your thoughts on the idea that a future mechanic may involve shuffling cards back into your deck as a cost for spells and effects. So it enable players to potentially put recruit targets back into their decks, improving the viability of the recruit mechanic and creating further synergies with deck building. Really keen to hear your thoughts. Huge fan of the show. Keep up the great work. Uh, yeah, that'd be kind of a cool... I mean, we already have things like, you know, you take damage and all that kind of stuff. You play minions that are have weak stats to do strong things. So, yeah, Kill if you had to... Um, do stuff. Yeah, if you had to, instead of killing a minion, like shuffle it back into your deck. Mm-hmm. That'd be kind of cool. One thing that I've seen the Recruit Warriors do is they're playing a single uh, dead man's hand so that if they draw the minions, they can shuffle them back into their deck so then they can recruit them because that's the one kind of bad thing about recruiting is sometimes you draw the minions and then, Mm -hmm. you know, it's like when you play Big Priest and you just draw all the minions and you don't get to play them for free. And you have to actually pay for them. You gotta pay for them. It's terrible. Yeah. (laughs) It's awful. (laughs) But yeah, I mean, it's uh, that's kind of a cool thing that you can do now. So yeah, maybe if other classes could get something like that, that'd be. Uh, I, I like the idea. I mean, it'd be cool. You know what you call it when you draw the minion you want? You wanted to ret- re- uh, recruit. What's that? A fluster cluck. <laughs> I had to. I apologize. Just don't. That, just don't yeah. say clustered. You, yeah. Uh, other thing yeah yeah you have to be really careful of saying that too fast and mixing up letters clustered fluck yeah, yeah there I got you go. there. A fluster <laughs> clock yeah yeah just to go back and play that in slow motion so you'll see my face go through five different stages of terror as i try and get that joke out so uh Garrett's wondering if he has to go edit something now <laughs> <laughs> pretty much pretty much <laughs> going through my bumpers like do i still have the chicken cluck that i use as a bleep when we need one uh, anyways, uh, thank you for your emails, everybody. TACpodcast at gmail.com is the place to send those. And that's going to wrap up our first post Cobalt and Catacombs episode. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Thanks again to our patrons over at patreon.com slash TAC, especially our Patreon producers, Declan H., Michael N., Sean C., Johnny S., and LVE. Thank you very much. Pick up an Angry Chicken t-shirt at shirts.amove.tv. There's also custom etched glassware available at etched.amove.tv. Uh, you can find the whole back catalog of episodes at amove.tv. Follow the show on Twitter at TAC Podcast. And a reminder that next week we're recording on Monday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time instead of Tuesday to just get things out of the way before holiday travels kind of kick off. So with that in mind, around the table. Dills, where can everybody find you? Uh, we are... Uh... We are knee deep in the 12 Dills of Christmas. Uh, today is the third Dills of Christmas. So swing on by twitch.tv slash Willie Dills. You can check me out on Twitter. I'm at Willie Dills. And uh, that's where you'll find out when I'm going live. But yeah, it's been a lot of fun so far. 
playing a lot of Hearthstone, spreading a lot of holiday cheer, and uh, yeah, good stuff. And I will, uh, I will, I will be on that next week. Right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Monday. Yes. Yeah. Right. Tuesday. Monday? Tuesday. 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 Next week on Tuesday. Yes. Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> Jocelyn, how about yourself? I can find me on Twitter and Twitch. I'm at Joss Plays. Uh, Dills and I did PvP this past Thursday, and it was super freaking fun. It was so tearing fun. it up in some battlegrounds. We actually like won some battlegrounds that we even Horde doesn't we normally win. We weren't terrible. Win. Yeah, yeah, we were doing pretty good. I was uh, once I actually saw the battleground and knew what I was supposed to do. Then yeah. it made a big difference. But and I was I earning thought... like three million artifact power at a time. Yeah. It was crazy. Billion kills. Billion. Billions. That's right. <laughs> Billions of artifact power. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was uh, it was really really fun. I felt pretty confident in my healing. So if you guys are interested, uh, we're doing PvP Thursdays over on uh, twitchtv plays and twitchtv Uh And I personally have been streaming a whole lot more, uh, doing Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Sundays. So if you're into particularly World of Warcraft, I've been streaming a lot of WoW. So come check it out. Nice. Folks, I'm on Twitter at Garrett Art. All of the podcasts I do over at amove.tv. Just put up a new episode of Let's Talk About Star Wars, and there'll be a new one coming out next week because obviously, well, Last Jedi is coming out, and uh, we had to be wrong on theories one last time, and then we're going to have to talk about what actually happened in the movie and how we were wrong. So go find Let's Talk About Star Wars wherever podcasts can be found. And that's going to Did anybody say, what if there's one more Jedi? Was that anybody's theory? Uh, no. no. <laughs> what if at the end they're like, wait a minute, there's one more? <laughs> no? No? Okay. Well, then the, the, t- the, the poster would be The Last Jedi and it would have like an asterisk next to it. Right? Well, it, yeah, exactly. Have I mean, to. What I'm saying is like, you think it's The Last Jedi, but no. There's one more. <laughs> the last more. ish Jedi? <laughs> the last ish Jedi. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. I like it. I, li- I, like, your, I like your theory, Dills. <laughs> Just uh, when I thought it was the last. There's one more. Yeah, it'll, be, right, the anyway, last, it'll <laughs> be the last Jedi 2 electric boogaloo. That's what'll uh that'll that's actually the title of the uh the third uh of the new trilogy. That's what it's gonna be. Uh thank you everyone for tuning in. It's gonna wrap it up. Until next week. Job's done. Job's done. I'd cough. <laughs> Job's done. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <clears throat> uh.